morning, theory scholars. So in this video, we're going to look at part writing of root position 5 to a root position 1, first in major and then in minor. So I have some basic steps laid out here that we can work through, and you can write them down if you find them helpful. Um, we're going to work through this in SATB format. And if you just need a quick reminder of what that is, what that means is we're going to put a soprano and an alto voice on the top staff, and we'll stem the soprano up, the alto voice down, and we'll have a tenor and a bass voice on the bottom staff. Again, each of those gets stemmed differently. And then in regard to the spacing rule in SATB, we'll need to make sure that we keep the soprano and the alto within an octave, no more than an octave between those, and the alto and the tenor also within an octave. And then it's okay if the bass gets a little bit lower. That's all right. Okay, so let's start from the top here. First step, we're going to spell out our five chord and we're going to circle the leading tone in that chord. So the leading tone, remember that scale degree seven. And the reason why I'm, I have to be really conscious of that um, every time I write a dominant chord is because first of two reasons. First, we don't tend to double tendency tones, so I want to make sure that I haven't doubled that note. But second of all, tendency tones have a certain way that they're resolving. So in this case, the leading tone wants to resolve up to scale degree seven when it's in an outer voice. If it's an inner voice, it's all right if it doesn't resolve, but the outer voice it needs to resolve. So I really need to know where that tone is at when I'm part writing. Okay, so first bit, I need to spell the five chord. So in the key of G, the five chord, so we're gonna think of scale degree five first, which is a D, and then just imagine stacking your snowman up on D. So I need a D and F sharp, F sharp because of the key signature, right? And an A. So D, F sharp, A, and I'm just going to write them underneath the Roman numerals. And I'd recommend, especially when you start doing part writing, you, mean, you, do, you do that. Just write out what's in your chords so you don't forget to include everything. Um, okay, so I need a D, an F sharp, and an A. And I'm going to circle the leading tone in that spelling so I know exactly where it's at. So two different ways you can think of this. Your leading tone is scale degree 7. So imagine where scale degree 1 is. G is here. So scale degree 7 is the note right below it. In the key signature, then, that's an F sharp. So the leading tone is F sharp. Or you can think of it this way. The dominant chord, it's always the third of the chord. Um, so however you want to you wanna memorize this. But I got to know where it's at. Okay. So if it's a root position chord, that means the root of the chord needs to go into the bass. So there's no question asked. We always write the bass note first um, if you've got your Roman numerals. So write in your D and you can stem the note down. And... What I recommend is you cross each of these out as you write them in. Okay, so I've got D, and then we're just gonna go right in order, include everything that's there in order, and then I'll do my doubled note last. So the next note I need here is an F sharp, and you could put that in any voice, um, any voice that's reasonable with the spacing, here, 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 up at the top. I think I'll maybe, I'll stick it up here in the top, and maybe I'll make that my alto, my soprano voice, so I'm gonna stem it up. And as soon as I write it, I'm gonna circle it. I've got it circled here. I'm gonna circle it right there so I know exactly what's going on with that note. And I'm gonna cross that out. And now I need an A. So I've got two choices. I could put it here or I could do some ledger lines and put it down here, but it might be a little nicer to put it there. Okay, and then the doubled note last. So when you've got a root position chord, we tend to double the, the base or the root of the chord if we can. So that means I need another D. So I'm going to put the D in the alto here then. So I'm going to cross that out. So before I do anything else, especially in the very first chord, you got to make sure you check your spacing um, so you know that you, you've set yourself up well for the next chord. So between the alto and the soprano, I got those are within an octave. Yep. Between these two voices, yep. The A to the D is within an octave, and then it's okay if the bass is a little lower, but it, it's within an octave. It's good. Okay, so then the next um, next step. So I've checked my spacing. The next bit before I do anything with the one chord is to resolve the leading tone because there's really no argument about where that tone is going if it's in an outer voice. So when I look at it, it's in the soprano voice, so it does need to resolve. So I'm gonna resolve it right now. I know that no matter what, that has to go up to G because it's in an outer voice. So I'm gonna do that before I even worry about the rest of the one chord. Okay, so now let's spell my one chord. So in the key of G, my one chord's gotta be built on scale degree one, which is G. So I'm gonna kind of imagine stacking my snowman up here. So I need a G, a B, and a D in this chord. Since it's a root position chord, I know that G has to go into the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put the G down here. Cross it out. And I notice now I've already got a G up in the soprano. 
So I'm gonna cross that, it's already doubled, so that's done. And then I just need to fill the rest of my chord in. So your MO, once you put your bass in, is to just try to move all of your voices as smoothly as possible. So those upper voices, if you can keep them on the same note, keep it on the same note, or just try to move them by step. So we're gonna go in this, we're just gonna continue in order here and just try to find the smoothest place we could be and then the smoothest place for D. So first off, B. If you imagine B in the alto, the smoothest place would be to move it to B. The smoothest place in the tenor to put the B would be here. So which of these is closer? The tenor, right? This is a step, this is a skip of a third. So it'd be smoother to put it into the tenor voice. So that's what I'm gonna do. Put that in the tenor. And then I've got a D, so if I, the last voice here is the alto. And if you get to the last voice and you realize there's a leap, then you may rethink the last decision you made and see if there's something else smoother that you could do. But this looks good. I've got two voices moving by step, one that stays the same in the upper voices. This looks great. Your bass is gonna leap and that's okay. Um, your bass tends to leap, so that don't worry about trying to create smooth, the same kind of smooth voice leading there. Okay, so now that I've got everything in place, the final step, I just need to double check my part writing, make sure that I don't have any parallel fifths anywhere. Okay, so what you're looking for when you're looking for parallels is you're looking for voices that are moving in the same way. So if I, I start at the top, if I see this voice moves up by step, do you see any other voices that move up by step? I do, I see one, do you see it? So it's between your alto and your tenor, this also goes up by step. This voice stays the same, this one leaves. Okay, so if you have voices that move in the same way, you need to check the interval between them. Um, and make sure that that interval isn't a fifth or an octave, or you've got parallel fifths or parallel octaves. In this case, from B up to G, that's a six. So that means I've got parallel six. We're good, this looks good. Um, and then if I look at the rest of my voices here, I don't see anything else. This stays the same, nothing else stays the same, and we don't worry about notes staying the same anyway. It doesn't mean they're moving into a, a fifth or an octave. And the bass voice leaps, nothing else leaps. So that was my only set of parallels and they were good. All right, so we have successfully part written a five to one root position chord. Okay, so let's try the same thing in minor. Um, so I think I'm gonna keep my key signature as it is, but let's just change, let's change the key. So if I'm gonna work in minor and I have one sharp in the key signature, I am in the key of, what is this? E minor, right? It's E minor. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, a five, but remember in the minor key, the tonic chord um, is a minor one chord instead. So just be careful with your Roman numerals. Okay, I'm going to work through this in the same way. So I'm going to start by spelling out my five chord. Um, so in the key of E, if I imagine scale degree five, that would be B here. And then imagine stacking your snowman, right? So I'd have a B, a D, and an F sharp. Now there's one other step in minor um, that you have to remember is that in the five chord, remember you have to raise the leading tone in the five chord, but you always have to raise that up. So we've got to think about where the leading tone is. So you remember from just before we said, well, the, the leading tone is always the third of the chord. So you can think of it that way. The leading tone in the key of E minor, if you just imagine where E is at in the staff, E is here, so a step below it is D. D, so D sharp, a half step below would be your leading tone in the key of E. Or you can simply raise up the third of the chord. Um, so we always have to remember in minor only, we have to raise the leading tone in the five chord. Okay, so I've got it spelled out. I've circled my leading tone. Step one is done. Step two, I'm gonna notate this and then double the base of the chord. So I'm gonna write in my B is the root of the chord. So I'm gonna write my bass note in. And then I need D, so the next note in the chord. So let's see, maybe I'll put that in my alto voice, and remember you're gonna to have to raise that up in the notation also, and I'm gonna circle it so I remember where it's at. Okay, and then the F sharp, so again, you can put this anywhere you like, maybe I'll put it in, let's see here, maybe I'll put it in my tenor voice, keep my spacing nice. And then root position chord, I'm gonna double the root of the chord, so I need another B in this chord. So maybe I'll put that in my soprano. Before I do anything else, next bit, check my spacing. So let's see, octave, yep. Is this within an octave? Sure, it's with a sixth. So that looks good, spacing is good. Next step, I'm gonna resolve the leading tone if necessary. So if that leading tone is in an outer voice, either the soprano or the bass, it needs to resolve. In this case, it's in the alto, so I don't have to worry about resolving it. So I can just go on to the next bit. Okay, next step, I'm gonna spell out my one chord. 
Um, so in the key of E, imagine E on the staff and just sort of imagine your snowman, E, G, B. Okay, so E has to go in the base because it's a root position chord. So let's see, I could put it above or below. Maybe I'll stick it right there. Okay, and then a G. So what I'm looking for is the smoothest place to put a G. So imagine your different voices. If I go G in the soprano, that'd be a skip of a third. Here it'd be pretty, it'd be a leap from the alto. G from the tenor would be a step. So that looks pretty good. That'd be the smoothest place to put G. Okay, then I need a B. So again, imagine the smoothest place. In the soprano, it would stay put. Here it would skip. So smoothest would be just to leave it alone. And then a root position chord, you're gonna double the root. So I need another E in this chord. So last voice left is the alto, and E would be a step. So this looks good. So if I just take a quick scan here, everything's common tone or moving by step in the upper three voices. This looks pretty good. If you see a leap, go back, rethink what you've got. Okay, so now that everything is there, I'm just gonna check for parallels. So the top voice stays the same. I'm not gonna worry about voices that stay the same. The next voice goes up by step. Do you see anything else that moves up by step? I do. You see it? The tenor and the alto, right? So these two voices are moving in parallel. So we need to know what is the interval between them. So from G up to E, that interval is a sixth. So we're good. We've got parallel sixths, no problem. That is just fine. The bass voice leaps up, nothing else leaps up. So we're set. We've checked for parallels and we're good. All right, so there it is. That's how we resolve a root position five to a root position one.